What is up, guys? And welcome to another edition of the Market Marauder Show. Be in the market one trade at a time. All right, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Saudi Arabia shift from the U.S. dollar. So we are seeing monetary policy change right before our eyes. It's definitely an eye-opening thing from an investment standpoint. Uh, so we'll be breaking down some of the things going on in the market as well as what this means overall for the u.s economy so the u.s dollar dominance is in a decline as russia and saudi arabia i the chinese yuan for oil trades uh, investors may need to begin to revise their long-term investment strategies and this is a warning from the ceo of diverse group uh, one of the most significant but underreported outcomes from april's three-day summit between President Vladimir Putin and China's Xi Jinping uh, was that Putin and Russia are now in favor of the Chinese yuan for oil settlements. Um, and so last week or earlier this week, I should say late last week and early this week, uh, the Prince of Saudi Arabia said that he was going to announce he was moving from the U.S. dollar um, and they are officially going to be joining Project Embridge. Um, and so that's a huge deal for the U.S. Um, the U.S. was pegged by the petrodollar from the 1970s. So when the U.S. moved from the gold standard, they had the petrodollar, which was a 50-year um, brand that they had, which basically said every package or carrier of oil needs to be traded in U.S. dollars. So it kind of boosted... Um, the presence for the U.S. dollar, everything that was traded oil-wise was boosted by the U.S. dollar. And so with this shift, with Saudi Arabia being one of the largest oil producers or uh, exporters of oil in the world, uh, this will definitely change how those oil prices are going to be affected um, in the future. And so it's not something to panic about. I think it's very interesting how uh, the policies change with different people coming um, into power. Uh, if oil trading were to shift away from the U.S. dollar, it would dramatically reduce the demand for the U.S. dollar, which would lead to a decrease in the value of U.S. currency. Um, this could have uh, a number of ripple effects throughout the global economy, including including hugely increased inflation in the U.S. and potentially destabling effects on the financial markets. So, it is a big deal in that sense, <clears throat> but for individual investors, um, I think knowing more information about how this affects you personally um, is a bigger thing to look at. Um, and one thing I want to break down is what Project Enbridge is. So they joined Project Enbridge here recently, um, so I want to go over what that is. So Project Enbridge has just recently reached uh, minimum viable product stages and invites further uh, international participation. Project Enbridge uh, continues to develop uh, and has reached a minimal viable product or MVP stage while broadening its international reach. The project aims to explore a multi-central bank digital currency or CBDC platform uh, shared among participating central banks and commercial banks built on distributed ledger technology or DLT to enable instant cross-border payments and settlements. So with um, Saudi Arabia moving from the U.S. dollar, um, as you know, doing banking, you have three to five business days for all these transactions to happen. Uh, having a CBDC will make it easier because it's on a DLT. So you'll have faster transactions with that. So it's kind of a benefit from them. But CBDCs is something that's not implemented already into the U.S. So there's no regulation on CBDCs. Uh, you have USDC, which is kind of the closest thing to it, but it's not... Um, really a U.S. CBDC. There are other countries that have CBDCs that are out there. Um, you know, like China's uh, Digital Yuan is one of the CBDCs that are out there, but it's still in the early stages. There's still a lot of policies and governmental ordinances that need to be put into place so that there's not another collapse similar to what happened with the FTX situation. Now, that wasn't a CBDC. That was just an exchange that collapsed. But a lot of people lost money in it. And a lot of people lost their kind of faith in crypto with the uh, FTX situation. So CBDC is kind of on the along the line of a crypto, but 
it's kind of backed by something. So that's kind of the thing that a lot of people look at it where, oh, well, the U.S. dollar isn't backed by anything. Well, it was backed by oil, essentially, uh, with the petrodollar. And then before then, it was backed by gold. So now it not being backed by really anything except for uh, the different inflation rates. Also with the Fed, you know, personally saying there's only going to be one rate cut this year and not multiple. I think this is definitely something that's going to raise eyebrows um, in the Fed themselves on how they're going to potentially shift or posture themselves to change monetary policy in the future. So what I'll be looking for are things like maybe another rate cut, maybe more printing of money. Um, all of those are not directly positive or directly negative. Printing more money could help the U.S. economy overall, but then again, you'll have more inflation like we currently are in now. Um, or, you know, having more rate cuts, money is cheaper to get, but it's also being devalued because it's not pegged to oil or pegged to gold. So ultimately, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's a balancing act on what the Fed can do to help the situation or alleviate it. Uh, but I think understanding what the big players are, like Saudi Arabia, uh, China, uh, Russia, um, Hong Kong, what some of these other banks are doing uh, to kind of posture their way into the new financial market um, and the changing of hands of monetary policy is something that everybody should understand how it works because it will eventually trickle down to you. Uh, so Project Enbridge is a result of extensive collaboration starting in 2021 between BIS Innovation Hub and the Bank of Thailand the Central Bank of United Arab Emirates, and the Digital Currency Institute of the People's Bank of China and Hong Kong Monetary Authority. The Saudi Central Bank is joining Enbridge as a full participant. There's also now more than 26 observing members. The project aims to tackle some of the key inefficiencies in cross-border payments, including high cost, low speed, and operational complexities. It also addresses financial inclusion concerns particularly in jurisdictions where uh, correspondent banking, uh, which connects countries to the global financial system, has been in retreat, causing additional costs and delays. Multi-CBDC arrangements that connect different jurisdictions and single common technical infrastructure offer significant potential to improve the current system and allow cross-border payments to immediate, cheap, and universally accessible with final settlement. The platform based on a new blockchain, the Enbridge Ledger, if you're familiar with what ledgers are, <clears throat> will build uh, to support real-time, peer-to-peer, cross-border payments, and foreign exchange transactions. In 2022, a pilot for the real value transaction was conducted. Since then, the Enbridge project uh, team has been exploring whether the prototype platform could evolve to become an MVP uh, as... as um, stage now has reached. To achieve this, the four founding participant central banks and monetary authorities have each developed a validating node, while commercial banks have conducted more real value transactions uh, preparing for the MVP release. In tandem, this project steering committee has created a bedspoke governance and legal framework, including a rule book tailored to match the platform's unique decentralized nature. So ultimately, it really comes down to who is in control of this monetary policy, uh, who is in control of, you know, where the money goes, how it flows. That's something that I think a lot of people are, are concerned about uh, seeing, you know, Hong Kong or Thailand or places that are not in the U.S. I think a lot of U.S. citizens are concerned about that. But it seems like I think the best thing you can do is just look at the education on how ledgers what a, what a ledger is, getting real versed into some of the terminology, P2P, which is peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, cross-border payments. Some of those things, terminologies, when they come up, are kind of versed in the crypto world because we're talking about a CBDC. So when you're talking about CBDC, you got to use crypto terminology. So make sure you go check out you know what those terms mean, uh, what are nodes, how those things work. I know for the people who are already in crypto, they're like, okay, this is common knowledge. People already know that. But for people who are switching over from, you know, the cash system over to a CBDC or a digital currency, these could be like completely different or groundbreaking words that they're like, what does that mean? I can't transfer over what that means. So I would say just educate yourself on crypto because Enbridge, 
is basically uh, CBDC. And so the MVP platform is enabled uh, to undertake real value transactions subject to jurisdictional uh, preparedness and is also compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. This allows it to be tethered uh, for add-on technology solutions and new cases and interoperability with other platforms. And so they've kind of thought about, well, how is this going to be used? Who are the people that are going to be using it? How can people get access to it? What are things that are out there that people are already using, like ledger wises um, or uh, exchanges that people can use it? What are the banks that need to be? So basically, they thought about the infrastructure um, that they built around it. So <clears throat> if you're not familiar with what Enbridge is, uh, here's a brief history of Enbridge, the Enbridge project. It's been around since 1930. So it was founded in 1930, uh, created in 1930 at the Hue Conference. Uh, convention respecting establishment of the BIS was signed by Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the UK uh, on the one hand and Switzerland on the other hand. Uh, so they're around during the Second World War. They also uh, had a forum uh, for European monetary policy from 1947 to 1993, or yeah, 1997 to 1993. Um, and then also uh, they have ongoing global policies that they're continuing to make. So the success of the European Payments Union is restoring currency convertibility in Europe. Uh, in 1958, meant that uh, Bretton Wood uh, system has finally operational throughout the Western world. A uh, good deal in international cooperation uh, with required to keep this system running smoothly. Um, and then also you have in 1997, the BIS in the new financial architecture was created. Uh, 1997, Asian crisis and 1998, Russian crisis prompted further rethinking of the global financial architecture. And in February 1999, the Financial Stability Forum uh, was created which became the Financial Stability Board in 2009 to coordinate the work of national financial authorities and international standard setting bodies. So there's basically committees and groups of people around uh, ushering in this monetary policy. Uh, they have people working in the CBDC space. It seems like they have, you know, experts in the field. They're thinking about policies, governance. Um, they're kind of up to date on some of the P2P things that they're doing. I didn't see a white paper on their website because they're not a CBDC. They're more of a bank of banks. So they're kind of a conglomerate of banks together, making more monetary policies um, in the form of a CBDC. So I think that's something to start with, understanding what CBDCs are, how it affect you overall. You may see higher gas prices. You may see um, higher prices for commodities um, or things going up. Uh, such as gold, more people might be buying gold um, just because, you know, gold has already always held its value. Or you may see people buying uh, more gas because they think that gas prices are going to go up, so they're just stocking up on gas. So, you know, ultimately, I think this is a very interesting time for monetary policy. I encourage everybody to do more research on what this monetary policy is, how the petrodollar came about. It's a very good history lesson on understanding how monetary policy works. But I would say continue to watch gold, like GLD, uh, continue to watch the actual market as a whole. It's a very interesting time overall um, and something that I think everyone should look at. But ultimately, shifting away from the U.S. dollar is something that I thought I would never see in this lifetime. But I think that it be should be something everyone researches and looks at. Um, drop a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about shifting from the U.S. dollar. Do you think the U.S. should make its own CBDC to combat uh, Project Enbridge or should the U.S. join Project Enbridge? Should it make more crypto policies so that people can have more access to DeFi or decentralized uh, coins? Should it have its own cryptocurrency to replace the dollar since the dollar um, is being steadily devalued through all these different policies? Drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Make sure you hit that thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys on the next one.